I'm pretty sure I've touched on this before, just uh, the amount of stuff that I know that I don't know. Uh, I listen to people tell me how much they know and what they do know, and, and a lot of times I'll think, and I think, they don't know that. They, it's, uh, you know, we had a quite a distinguished PhD come to our house one day, and he was postulating on one of his theories, and uh, fortunately he's had some life-changing events that have kind of popped him past his intellectual bubble. And he was going on about one of his pet theories on how things absolutely work. And my wife said to him, uh, you don't know that. And he wheeled and he started to list his credentials. And then he stopped and he started laughing. He said, you're right, I don't know that. He said, I, you're absolutely, I don't know that. He said, it is what I believe at this point in time. Um, but years ago, uh, we were teenagers, I know that, my uh, younger brother Jeff, uh, Kennedy said, have you thought about this? He said, if there's an end to the universe, now there are theories that the universe is continually expanding and it'll contract, which goes along with the yin and yang and, and whether that's happening or not, I, don't, I wouldn't be the one to say that, that's for sure, I'm, I don't know much about that at all, I'm a hair stick on it. <laughs> um, but uh, he said, if there's an end to the universe, right, because a lot of the universe seems like there's nothing there. What's outside the end? And I've thought about that from time to time. And, and other possibilities and curiosities. Uh, again, you know, before when the world was flat, hell was, it was logical. It was, it was an eternal earth. It was eternal ground. It was eternal. And below that was hell and all those things. And it was eternal up. And then we uh, made the earth finite by discovering that it was round and uh, really meshed with a whole bunch of the theories as they existed at that time. Uh, quite exciting, I mean, right now, how many of the things that when I was a kid I looked at and thought, I wonder if this will ever be possible. I was thinking the other day about uh, Dick Tracy's watch that he could just talk to and see other people and stuff. I know my boys are I'm actually leaving Maui today, but... Uh, I've got a, an American SIM card from my phone that I gave to my younger boy. He got to Maui, texted us from the American SIM card, uh, asking for his brother's phone number, who I didn't have. Uh, Micah got there first, but Nicole had got one of Micah's friends on Maui's phone numbers, so she texted back to my son Ian, this other man's phone number, and so Ian called Mike and his friend, and the neat thing is, they thought he was coming in the next day. Right? But from halfway around the world, uh, within an instant, uh, my son was picked up at the airport. I'm sure it wasn't just within an instant, but Maui Airport's not a bad place to wait for anybody. <laughs> the tropical breezes and the palm trees swaying and the smell of the ocean and stuff, it's, it's not a bad place at all. But uh, so much is changing so quickly uh, I look forward to the next few years. That's, I think, going to be fascinating. Uh, www.mic peak performance. My uh, other website is uh, jetlageliminator.com, and my book is Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing. Not that it makes any sense, but some of it works. Have fun. <laughs>